Hey everyone, I'm not Dan, but in this video it's Redox Reactions Part 2. It's... Welcome back. Let's take a look at an example of how to identify what is being oxidized and what is being reduced in a redox reaction. So behind me, I have an equation here. We've got copper reacting with silver nitrate to give us copper 2 nitrate and silver. So this is your basic single replacement reaction. All right, so uh, the first step in identifying what is oxidized and what is reduced is writing down the charges of every element or ion involved in the equation. Now, uh, if it's an element, so a pure element, like we have copper and silver here, which they're not bonded to anything, so they are pure elements. Every time you see that, the charge is going to be zero. So I'm just gonna put a little zero above each of those. Okay, now I'm gonna look at my compounds here. We've got silver nitrate. Now silver is a transition metal, so I can't just know it's charged automatically, but nitrate, I do know it's charge, uh, so if you look that up on your reference chart, you will see that nitrate is negative one. So in order to balance that out, silver must be positive one, okay? On over here to copper two nitrate. So again, copper is a uh, transition metal. So I'm gonna have to start with our, our negative ion here. So again, it's nitrate, so that's negative one. But since there are two nitrates, overall that's a negative two, so that means copper must be positive two, all right? So now that I have written uh, my charges, all I'm going to do is just compare the reactant side to the product side. All right, so here we go. Copper goes from a charge of zero to positive two. Its charge is going up because it is losing electrons. And if you recall from the last video, oil rig oxidation is losing electrons. So I know that copper here is my, uh, or is the one that's being oxidized. All right, silver is going from plus one down to zero. Its charge is going down because it is gaining electrons and reduction is gaining electrons. So I'm going to put silver plus one. Now, you might be wondering why this is just copper and that's silver plus one. Well, that's because on the reactant side, copper has a charge of zero and silver has a charge of positive one, all right? Now, what about nitrate? Well, nitrate goes from negative one to negative one. It doesn't change at all. So it doesn't even really factor into our equations here, okay? So now that we know that copper is oxidized and silver is reduced, it's time to find the agents. All right, so it goes like this. The oxidizing agent is the one that causes something else to be oxidized. Or in other words, it's the one being reduced, right? So silver plus one is the oxidizing agent. The reducing agent is anything that causes something else to be reduced and is causing something else to be reduced because it's the one being oxidized. So copper is the reducing agent. All right, so this is just nothing more than the opposite game. Once you know what's oxidized and what's reduced, just flip them, and now you've got your agents. And there's one other way that you can identify what is being oxidized and what is being reduced, and it's very simple. If you recall from the last video, I gave you the definition that reduction is the purification of a metal. All right, so you look on the product side, what's being purified? What's the one being put all by itself? In this case, it is silver. So silver is the one being reduced, and the other metal is the one being oxidized. So that's also a real quick way for you to identify what is oxidized and what is reduced, all right? So there's your example, and pretty much everything else you are going to see works just like that. All right, so if you have any further questions about that, uh, please comment below, or you can send me an email to chemistrytalk at gmail.com. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching, and just remember, I'm not Dan, and neither are you. Check you later.